Mizuma TV back in the building, man. What's going on, y'all? Shout out to Mizuma Nation. Shout out to the Mizuma Ma. We in the building, man. I hope everybody's having a blessed, beautiful, positive, productive day. On my way to go get it in all this rain, but it's all good, man. On the road to 2K. We on our way to that 1300 mark, man. Shout out to the nation. Shout out to the mob for making this possible. Go check out MizumaMerch.com, man. I'm telling you, got some good designs that I just posted up on there, man. Get you a crew neck. Get you a hoodie. You know what I'm saying? Get you a long sleeve t-shirt, regular t-shirt, a coffee mug, a sticker that's only like five bucks, man. Go support the brand, man. It is much appreciated. Now, what I want to speak about today is Jamel Charlo. I was going to speak on this on my live yesterday, but I had to catch up on some Z's, man. I was completely exhausted. And I feel like if I can't give you all the best content possible, then it's just best to do it the next day. You know what I mean? Or at least when you're feeling better. So uh, what I want to get into is Jamel Charlo. You know what I mean? Jamel Charlo, according to Boxing Scene, an article that I had seen on there, has vacated his IBF world title. Um, I had posted it on my community page um, yesterday, and I apologize for the inaccuracies because the inaccuracies because i initially said that he had been stripped of the ibf world title which was completely false my apologies on that i had misread an article that i had been uh reading you know what i'm saying it turns out he actually vacated the title you know what i mean i guess he didn't feel like he he owed it to his mandatory to face him or whatever um so he i guess he decided to vacate and that could mean several things that could mean that either he he's just pursuing big money bigger money fights like he said after the canelo press conference it could be that he's possibly be moving up to middleweight it could be a lot of different things but nonetheless he got rid of the belt so now he's two belts removed from undisputed status you know what i mean so as far as i'm concerned um he no longer has the wbo or the ibf so that leaves him the wbc and the wba you know what I mean? Which still makes him the unified champion at 154 pounds. So I guess he still has some leverage in the division. You know what I mean? But he's no longer undisputed. You know what I mean? He no longer has three belts. So now, now he's just holding on to two. So it's interesting to see how Jamel Charlo is going to move um, after this situation. But apparently, according to boxing scene, his mandatory his name was like Bakram Morda Zaliev. You know what I mean? I might have said that wrong. Apologies. You know what I mean? That's not, you know I mean, that's not a name that I'm typically used to saying. You know what I mean? But uh, European fighter uh, managed by Igis Klemis, you know what I mean? Who has Vasil Lomachenko and uh, fighters of that nature. Um, apparently, according to the boxing article, that he's been a mandatory since November of 2019, bro. So it's been around this time, four years ago, he became a mandatory for Jamel Charlo. And um, they just been holding up, holding him off, man. According to the article, they gave him several step aside packages, which most likely mean that they was giving him like little side money, like yo, just take this bread real quick, man. Just fall back. We want, to, uh, we got some bigger money fights. Um, you know what I'm saying? If you cooperate, we could take care of you type situation. And um, they've been extremely patient, man. <laughs> Morda Zaliev has been extremely patient with the step aside money, especially to do it continuously throughout the course of four years. That's a lot of time you're taking off of your career to not fight for a world title. But um, they also offer him like slots on like uh, their undercards and stuff like that. And he's done it several times. So he's been more than patient. You know what I'm saying? With being a mandatory for Jamel, because he obviously could have been impatient and be like, after like one or two years, he's gonna be like, nah, man, like I want this, I want this title shot, like I need this right now. You know what I'm saying? And they could have actually like really enforced it. But nonetheless, he's been a mandatory for four years. And um Jamel Charlo, I guess he didn't want to continue dealing with that situation. So he just gave up the belt because he probably feels like that dude doesn't bring anything to the table. It's similar to what Boo says, uh what Buzz says about boots. And um, he wants he got big, he felt like he got bigger fish on the line. So that belt is vacant as of right now, which is interesting because, in all honesty, man, that's what they should have done with Boots. You know what I mean? They should have made the belt vacant and have him fight for it. Like they're gonna have Morda Zaliev. So apparently, uh, Bakram Morda Zaliev is gonna be facing Jack Koke, somebody that Demetrius Andre had beat for a world title at 154 pounds. Um, they they gonna have them fight for the IBF world title. So there's gonna be a new champion in the division in time you know what i'm saying and um yeah what i really want to get into exactly you know what i'm saying is does this take away from a potential super fight with terrence crawford you know what i mean terrence crawford somebody who was uh undisputed at 147 pounds before the ibf stripped him um pound for pound number one fighter in the world and um damn all that fucking water <laughs> um He's the, he's the pound for pound number one fighter in the world, and Jamel has been reigning as the top 154 pound guy 
in the world as well. You know what I'm saying? So um, that was the fight that I actually was looking forward to seeing after the Earl Spence rematch. You know what I'm saying? But does this take away from him possibly getting that big fight against Terrence Crawford? Because after that performance against Canelo, Terrence Crawford said on the record that he's not even really interested in facing Jamel anymore. I don't know if his mind has changed since then because Terrence Crawford does have, to have a tendency to change his mind like he did with Canelo. But, uh, yeah, man, I really want to see... Um, does this take away from a like a potential fight against Terrence Carver? Because Terrence Carver would be like, uh, yeah, I mean, it all depends on how he moves forward with this Earl Spence rematch. But he probably like, man, he's not even undisputed no more. Do I really want to take this approach? Or he'd be like, or he could be like, oh, well, he still got two belts. Let me take them belts off of you real quick. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't I don't really know exactly what's going on. But, you know, Terrence Crawford is very driven by his legacy along with the money. And I, don't, I think that's one of the biggest money fights that he could actually make outside of the Earl Spence rematch or uh, a hypothetical fight against Canelo Alvarez and things like that. Um, I wonder if it'll be worth the, uh, taking the chance. You know what I'm saying? But Terrence Crawford, I think he feels like, all right, he's two-time undisputed. He's not really concerned about belts anymore. He felt like he accomplished a lot in the sport because he said that he felt accomplished after he got his first world title. So everything on top of that is just a bonus. You know what I mean? So maybe maybe he's not too intrigued with the belts at this point in time anymore. But then again, he may be uh, motivated by the fact, by the idea of becoming three-time undisputed. You know what I mean? And um, fighting Jamel and possibly beating Jamel gets you halfway to that point. You know what I mean? But you may have to face Mortis Aliyev if he beats Jack Koke. You might have to beat Jack Koke if he beats Mortis Aliyev. And then you're going to have to see Tim Zhu. So, yeah, this is exactly what I want to figure out, man. That's my take on this whole situation uh jermel charlo vacates his ibf belt and there's gonna be a new champion in the 154 pound division within time does this take away from the possible matchup between him and terrence crawford y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments below this is mazuma tv thank you guys for tuning in i'm out of here man peace